Good day to you all kids. This presentation is from Pasmitam Content. Traditional Technologies and Arts of Sri Lanka The content of the presentation will be Objectives, Introduction to Traditional Technologies, What is Water Technology, Under that we are going to learn about tanks, canals, anecdotes, fonts, introduction to plate technology, final the evaluation. Objectives of this presentation to give an idea about traditional technologies, to give an idea about technologies used by our ancestors, to give an idea about challenges and achievements faced by our ancestors, to give an uh, idea about importance of traditional technologies. Now I am going to give an introduction to traditional technologies. Sri Lanka has a recorded history of about 2500 years. During this period, our ancient ancestors had many problems and issues that affected their day to day life. Therefore, they have adopted various technologies for resolving those problems. Some aspects of technologies are unique from generation to generation. Because of these reasons, these technologies are called traditional technologies. First midterm content is consists of water technology and clay technology. Water technologies consist of tanks, anecdotes and fonts. Uh, so let's have an idea regarding what is water technology. Water technology of Sri Lanka was considered as the best creation of Sri Lanka. Water technology of Sri Lanka started with the settlements. It means it started during the 3rd century. Tanks, dams and canals consisted as the main component of water technology of Sri Lanka. Tanks and anecdotes are first constructed in the dry zone of Sri Lanka. Dry zone receive rain only during certain period of the year. Therefore, people had need of storing water. That was the required uh, that was required for their consumption and agricultural activities during dry season. To ful fulfill this need, they started building tanks. The first tank built by Sri Lanka uh, in Sri Lanka was Abaya Vava, constructed by King Panduka Abaya. There are two types of tanks. Tanks can be categorized into two categories, small tanks and big tanks. small tanks. It can be assumed that the construction of a dam across the across a brook of stream so that water is collected there is the origin of a small tank. Uses of small tanks for the day-to-day -day consumptions for agricultural purposes, rapid growth of population. With the development of population and expansion of settlements, then their consumption become more and more. So uh, they started to build big tanks. The construction of big tanks started in 3rd century uh, and the pioneer of the big tanks was considered as the King Wasabha. King Mahasen, King Datusen, King Parakramabahu also considered as the pioneers of building large tanks. 
Let's see some kings who constructed big tanks. King Dadusena, King Masaba, King Parakram Bahu and King Mahasen built big tanks. King Dadusena built Kalavava and Madhutugama Vava. King Masaba built Mahavilachi and Manakati tanks. King Mahasen built Minneriya Vava, Mahakanadara Vava, Hurulu Vava. King Parakrama Gabahu built Parakrama Samudraya and he also built 163 tanks. Achievements of the consequent construction of big tanks. As a huge volume of water could be stored in a large tank, shortage of water could be minimized even during the prolonged droughts. Floods could be controlled because of large scale tanks. With the construction of large scale tanks, the technology of constructing long canals developed. Small tanks could be provided with water from large scale tanks through canals. Now we are going to learn about the technology used by uh, our ancient peoples to build tanks. When uh, building a tank, they pay attention regarding several factors. Especially they pay attention regarding the place and also they consider about the height of the location. Mostly they select a narrow river valley with two mountain ranges on either side. Dam was created across the river joining the two mountain ranges. Not only that they consider about the pressure created by water. And also the next most important thing is the resources. They think about the human resources plus to is they consider about the uh, number of resources they want to build the tank. This is a structure of a tank and there, there are many key features in the tank. These are some main parts of a tank. The first one is Bissau Kotua. Bissau Kotua is very important uh, for a tank due to many reasons. Bissau Kotua has been constructed in order to let out the water stored in the tank with proper regulation. Bissau Kotua is a part of a sluice itself. In a big tank uh, with several sluices, there are also an equal number of pisogotu. It means if there are many sluices, there are separate pisogotu for them. Then uh, pisogotu is constructed in a square shape from inside the tank very close to there. Water enters the pisogotu through a tunnel. Inside Bissau Kotua, there is a door that can be moved up and down and water can be released into the outlet tunnel with proper control by moving the door as required. Bissau Kotua is considered to be a unique invention of Lankan irrigation technologies. The next one is the sluice. The sluice was created for the purpose of letting out through the dam into a canal. The water that is stored in a tank extreme, uh, exerting a high pressure on the dam. Most tanks have sluice, namely the upper sluice and bottom sluice. The bottom sluice is constructed at the bottom level of the tank so that all the water stored in the tank can be let out into the valley. This also helps to uh, dislike the tanks. The 
upper sluice was so constructed a little above level of the bottom sluice. In small tanks, a bisocotua has been constructed and water let out through the sluice itself. Straight water, the main intention of uh, the main purpose of a breakwater is to protect the uh, dam. Inside the dam, uh, the inside of the dam has been constructed laying stones on the surface in order to prevent uh, the dam from being washed away into the tank. That is the main purpose of the break water then i am coming to the last one spill the uh, spill is consisted of two parts inner spill and outer spill the inner spill has been constructed for the purpose of obtaining water for the tanks from some other sources of water a small pit has been constructed so that this cell that it is carried with water from outside is deposited there and preventing it from entering to the tank. When the flow of water from outside is stopped, this pit can be decided. The outer spill has been constructed for the purpose of letting the excess water out. A big tank may be constructed with two outer spills. Technologies that applied constructing canals and dams. An anicut. A bunt constructed across a river, canal or stream to block the following of water in order to divert some of that water to paddy field. A dam, a bond which constructed to retain in water. There are two types of dams, permanent dams and makeshift dam. Requirements for constructing canals. Carry water from tanks and anicuts to farmlands. Carry water from an anicut to a tank or tank system. Carry water from one tank to another tank to several other tanks. Technologies that applied in constructing canals and the challenges confronted. Variation in the geographical condition. The land was obtained from beginning to the end of canals, leaking canals. Maintaining correct width and depth, building up the bonds to protect banks. Techniques in constructing canals. Banks of the canals were constructed with stone walls. The sluice along the canal for diverting water to paddy fields have been constructed using stone blocks. Sluice was constructed with stone blocks. Now we are going to focus our attention regarding some canals constructed by some kings. King Vasambha constructed 12 canals. King Mahasen constructed Talavatuela. King Dathusena constructed Yodala. King Akabodhi constructed Minipe Ala. Under water technology, we have to learn about ponds. Ponds were constructed for the purpose of storing water required for various human needs. The history of constructing ponds in Sri Lanka runs far back as to the time of legends of Prince Vijay. Now we are going to focus our attention regarding why ponds are constructed. Ponds are constructed in order to achieve four main objectives. 
they are to store water for the proper removal of rainwater to add beauty to keep environment cool. If we consider about to store water, Tran uh, Masuyana and uh, Twin Pond was constructed in order to store water. Then uh, sometimes we use ponds uh, to add beauty to the environment. Ran Masuya Nanu Radhapura, Kumara Pakuna and Nelum Pakuna in Polon Narva are good example for this. And also sometimes tanks are used to keep environment cool. In Abegiria premises, we can see this. There are 65 ponds constructed in order to keep the environment cool. And also, ponds are used for proper removal of rainwater. Ponds in four sides of Abegiria Dagaba are good examples for this. Technology of constructing ponds. Main attention focused to water sources, planting trees, beating the walls on rocks, digging the soil. Walls are made of stone slabs to minimize soil erosion and to minimize water absorb into the uh, water absorb into the ground. Now we are going to focus our attention regarding uh, what the last topic under water technology that is water gardens. What are water gardens? Water gardens are also known as pleasure gardens because in ancient time people used these gardens in order to spend in their leisure time or doing sports. The first Water garden created in Sri Lanka was constructed by King Muttasiva. When Narahat Mahinda came to Sri Lanka, also there were two, there were two water gardens. They are Mahameuna Garden and Nandanuyana. Some examples for water gardens. Ranmasuya in Nanuradapure Water Garden in Sikiri. Some examples for monastery gardens. Water Garden in Mahavihare premises. Water Garden in Abeviria premises. Water Garden in Jetavana temple premises. Key features of a water garden. Planning the water garden to Suit the nature of land and environment. Constructing well planned system of roads within the garden. Beauty find the garden within drains, ponds, and water fountains. Creating a pleasant environment with cabins, pavilions, resting places, and beautifully grown plants and trees. Maintaining the garden properly under the supervision of Gardeners. Now we are going to focus our attention regarding a new topic that is clay technology. Clay technology is considered as an important traditional art in Sri Lanka and it is unique to Sri Lanka. Using clay, ancient Sri Lankan built vessels, images, sculptures, and other artistic creations. Steps of the process of making a clay object. A suitable type of clay is selected first. Clay is left to firm up. A bowl of permed up clay is placed on the potter's wheel. Shape of the object is made first. Then the bottom of the object is made. Patterns are designed to made on the surface of the object to add beauty.
clay object is left to dry. Put in the clean and firm. Making bricks and tiles. Some constructions that have been doing using bricks. Abe Giriya Daga Bain Anuradha Pureya Jetavana Rame Daga Bain Anuradha Pureya Demala Mahasaya in Polon Narua King Parakram Bahu's Palace in Polon Narua Some extra examples which can be uh, taken under bricks and tiles uh, used during ancient time. Hope you get a clear understanding regarding midterm content. So I am going to end up my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you.